Well, good morning. That is some snazzy new intro music there, Pat. Thanks so snazzy. much. Snazzy. <laughs> a little jazzy snazzy on a Friday. It absolutely <laughs> is. Uh, welcome. This is Tampa Home Talk. Thanks so much for joining us this week. I am joined yet again by my counterparts, Mr. This Guy. Oh, Leo Kane from Barrel Engineering and Inspection. And Adam Talley with Talley Insurance. It's good to be back after a week off. I know, right? You're going to be like running the show. Wait, are you gone next week and the week after? No, I'll be here next week. You'll be here next week. So, I'll, well, I'll be here next week too. But okay. the two weeks the after 31st, that. Which one? Yeah. The 31st you're missing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. then you get some help the week after. Yeah, it's the Adam show on the 31st. So yeah, be awesome. the 31st. Adam is going to be on his own. And don't think that our listeners will not call and tell me how you did. They will. Oh, it'll be great. <laughs> it'll be great. Two hours of the uh, best sandwich shops in Tampa. It'll be awesome. Oh, my God. No, no. You. There's actually a show planned that day with guests so you got to be prepared there's guests good okay good. you're not talking about sandwiches all hour okay or two hours damn that would be like a, one of my <laughs> favorite shows it would be a great show to talk yeah. about talking about food at 8 a.m reasons to move to tampa all the sandwich shops so uh one of our special guests this hour is probably going to be hanging out with for the next couple is mr ken barton uh he is the ceo and founder of hosty Dot co. Mm -hmm. Welcome to the show. Hey, thank you so much for having me. And um, we have a great show lined up for you today. We're going to be talking, if you listen to the intro, all about uh, vacation home and vacation home rentals. And even like the second homes, like what happens when you need to rent your home out? What happens if you want to Airbnb or VRBO it? right? Or one of those type of sites and you want to rent it, you're probably going to find that you need some help. And so what we did was we pulled a lot of great information for you, things you need to know when you're buying that vacation home. And we also pulled some things that like are like follies, like stuff that people just kind of get irritated with if you're renting it on your own and some things to avoid. So shall we dive in? Yeah, let's do it. Let's All do right. It. So a couple of tips right away for buying a vacation home is considering how you're going to use the home, right? Mm -hmm. That's a big one. Right. Adam, we were talking all about a joint customer that we had mm -hmm. that was buying a lot of these condos mm -hmm. that were right on the beach. And that was one of the things he was looking for was the ability to do those short term rentals. And you can't do that in every condo. You can't. And uh, you can't do that with every insurance carrier either. Um, <laughs> I'm sure you're going to elaborate on that one. Yeah, well, it, uh, it, it, it was a little difficult not only to find it, find a carrier that would do the short-term rentals, but also that would do, that would write the home as a, um, you know, in the name of a trust. So if you start mm -hmm. getting it, if you start putting it into a name of a trust or an LLC or anything else like that, you're really starting to narrow the... Uh, the amount of options that you're I know gonna have. lenders get weird about that too. Like yeah, they, they really do. don't want an LLC or a trust. Um, from from an insurance standpoint, like how limited are your options? Uh, it well, let's just say we're not at the beach because when we're at the beach, now we're in an even smaller box because we're in a wind zone. So it, it and a flood zone and everything else. So it turns out. What to do be you mean the big. master policy is going to cover that? It'll cover for the flood. It won't cover for the wind. Um, so when it comes to LLCs. The reason why the carriers are a little bit more hesitant to insure them is because the liability, right? So now it's more of a commercial risk, not a personal lines type risk. So when you get into the liability, even though, you know, a DP3, which is what you write for your, you know, your non-owner occupied, mm -hmm. your rental properties, even though the liability on that policy is specifically designed for that premises, you do, you they would still have to defend themselves to get out of, you know, to say that, oh yeah, we don't cover that, but they'd still have an. So, how much more expensive that. is something like that, like that condo that you did? What would that be if it was just a second home for them? And what would it? What was it knowing that he's going to rent it out? Do you know roughly how much that insurance would have changed? In his case, it wasn't. Uh, you know, both policies, wind and you know the X wind uh, policy, were still relatively within the the normal range. But that's mostly because the condo itself was so new like mm -hmm. the condo was four years old so you know the differences on Which, that weren't that weren't that bad you get into a 50 year old condo and you're going to pay yikes. a hefty premium for a mm -hmm. four-year-old condo you know it's not going to be cheap uh, yeah the insurance cost was uh, uh probably 0. 0.0001 percent yeah, i mean this vacation home was more than the average price in tampa yeah absolutely so, you know all right so um evacuation locations is something else i say you should consider although where we live that could be um a benefit right like if you're renting out a vacation home and uh, i know where both of you gentlemen live that i was i ran into a customer at home depot 
was it yesterday or the day before from when I did like mortgages like 20 years ago he was like I've known him so long I have my oldest daughter with me and he's like I knew you before you were born I remember when your mom was pregnant with you and uh so he they're buying a bunch of these properties like down there like including duplexes Mm -hmm. in in the area and they're gonna Airbnb them it's awesome so I mean you know that area is growing too I think the whole area of Tampa has some some opportunity Absolutely. What area are we talking about? Because I don't know where. So downtown, lives. thanks, yeah. Ken. Great question. Because there could be somebody poking around, right, listening to the show that has no idea what we're talking yeah, about. Yeah, I don't know either. <laughs> um, so like that whole area downtown is really changed. The footprint has changed. There's been a lot of money come in with Vinick and Bill Gates, and it's also what they call Opportunity Zone. So there's like a bunch of tax benefits right. if you buy and or build. You're familiar with Opportunity Zone? Oh yeah, I am. Yeah, we like Opportunity Zones quite a bit. Yeah. So we'll maybe we'll chat about that as well in mm-hmm. the future. But that's what they're doing: buying like um, do plexes and renting them out brand new like built building them and they're going to rent them out short term now can i be specific because when you say renting them out so i draw a very big line between traditional rent and vacation rental Mm -hmm. and those are very different businesses yes from the insurance side it's a completely different risk profile right right and so mortgage companies and traditional lenders are in love with rentals because it's a lease and it's a relationship and it's a on a contract expectation right whereas vacation rental much more uh, volatile, much more risk driven, mm-hmm. but yes. it's also more reward. So I just think it's important to draw that line between vacation rental and traditional rental. Yeah, right? absolutely. They're mm-hmm. totally different. It's two totally different people, right? That you're running to. I mean, think about it. If if I'm renting my house out and you're looking to do a 12 month lease, we're looking for a totally different person than if right. you're going to be vacationing in my home for a week. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. And and your house is probably going to be totally empty <laughs> if you're renting it for a year, as opposed to all the Furniture and essentials yeah. mm-hmm. have to be there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, and I think uh, location matters when it comes to you know the short-term rentals as well because you're all your people that you're talking about downtown. It's fantastic because of everything the city does to draw the larger conventions and the Super Bowl and all these other events that yes. you know really drive the short-term rental market down there. So uh, one of the things too that I notice, and a lot of my savvy investors and people that purchase, they I see them do this a lot, and it's the third tip on our list, and that's basically talk to locals. Mm-hmm. So get a feel for the land, right? Talk to some of the people. If you're buying in a condo building, see what they think about it. You mm-hmm. know, find out is it heavily rented by a bunch of snowbirds in the winter. You know, what's it like in the off season? What happens when, you know, April, May roll around? Is it still occupied? Is it a bunch of spring breakers? Like you need to know this sort of things and pay attention to what's around there, you know? Well, and if you're going to get a condo, make sure your condo allows short-term rentals before, yeah. you, before you dive into it. That's that like be in our issue. search before we even look at it, right? If that's the buyer. Well, actually, even with condos, you need to look into if they allow renters at all. Yeah. Right. There yeah, because some that, of them don't. There are yep. many or like the age restrictions. If you get one that will allow rentals, but it has to be 55 or up, then it really limits who you can rent to. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I don't, have you seen any of those, Ken? Because you guys are doing the short-term rentals. Have you seen 55 plus? Yeah. So you can't terms? do that with short-term rental websites because uh, you have to comply with fair housing law. So 55 plus communities are a very special, unique interest. Whereas I don't even know how they get away with it, honestly, with the whole fair housing law. I don't laws, know either. But, <laughs> uh, but I can tell you <clears throat> that you, whenever you use websites like Airbnb, VRBO, HomeAway, any there's there's you know it's a there's a salad of them. There's many. Right. Uh, you salad. cannot. <laughs> <laughs> we are like you, that. Vacation you, rental salad. <laughs> yeah. You you can't uh, say age range. You can't say gender. You can't say race. Right. Uh, and they've worked really hard to fight against that, which is good for everyone. Right. right. It's much better for the community. Uh, I did want to touch on one thing. So we manage properties in seven states. And condos are probably the best possible option because as a manager for a property, you're not responsible for amenities. And you know you have the building and they pay for it. Yeah. But – I have, can tell you of all my clients, I have a single client out of all the clients that we have that has a single condo that works for vacation rental. So Everything else is single family houses. Mm-hmm. Well, usually actually multi, multi-family houses. So oh, the multi-family. Duplex, okay. triplexes. That makes sense. Yeah, it's investors looking to hedge their risk, right? So it might be you know owner-occupied with a renter and a vacation renter. That's like a whole new meaning to hedge their risk, isn't it? So like, I'm telling you. Yeah. yeah. I love talking about risk profiles. So uh, fourth on our list kind of ties into what we're talking about, and it's the state laws the county municipalities, are you allowed to do it? Um, there was a, a duplex on Madeira Beach. Mm. We were looking at buying, but one of the neighbors came out and very clearly said, whoever buys this is not going to air VRBO it. <laughs> wow. That's what they said. Meaning no short-term rentals well, welcome here. Welcome to the neighborhood. Municipality <laughs> does not allow it. We don't want a bunch of new traffic coming through is what they were saying. 
So charming. <laughs> so, uh, but they were nice nonetheless. I just wanted somebody I think that was going to live there. Is but it the feel house. Like a piece of wheat hanging out their mouth. No wheat out of the mouth. <laughs> no wheat. You ain't going um, rent no, 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 none of my neighborhood. <laughs> so coming back on CF Home Talk, we're going to dive into the rest of the nine uh, with number five. We're going to talk a little bit about cost when we come back. And then uh, once we roll through these nine, we're going to tell you a little bit about Ken Barton, too, who he is, his background, how he got to start, and a little bit more information. You can get us at 813-377-2775. Off. Well, good morning. Welcome back to This is Tampa Home Talk. Leo Kane with Katrina Madewell and Adam Talley. And a phone number. We hey. have a phone number. We have <laughs> off-air phone number. So if you're interested in getting the rec- vacation rental racket, 813-377-2775. That's 813-377-2775. Why are you spinning your neck around like the exorcist? Like I you want- really don't know the number by now. I Come don't. on, Leo. Really? I- how many years have you been doing this? Too many, uh, like four or five. <laughs> too many sevens and too many threes and twos. But so, anyway, if well, you're here, interested, here's text, the thing. They text might vacation not, rental. Yes. Text, text vacation. T- t- just text vacay. 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 Oh, I like it better, yes. To 813-377-2775. I just love this topic. This topic's awesome. Because here's the dealio. The person listening is not going to want to jump right in. So by the way, we're not going to give you any pressure. We'll just give you information because we know that's what you want especially if you're first exploring this, right? Mm-hmm. They, we're not going to try to sell you a place right away and rent it. We're going to give you all the information you need. You can study the market, read, 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 which is what you should be doing anyway. A lot of the tips we're sharing. And then then when you're ready, we'll be ready. Fair yeah, enough? That's fair. And then Leo will inspect it for you to make sure that it's not collapsing on itself. And the best way to inspect a vacation rental is moving in for a weekend. <laughs> oh, that's, that's a great really idea, yeah, Leo. Is, actually, is that one of the nine to actually like? Try no, but we let that Leo be live in your house for a week just to make sure it's okay before we buy. Leo, as- I'll tell you a funny story. I have a very good friend who lives here in St. Pete, and she bought her first house here, and she uh, Airbnb's it. Uh, and a perfect inspection problem um, when she moved in, she had no idea that she had two roofs. Um, so they had built a oh, roof yeah. over her carport mm-hmm. to like turn her carport into another room, and so now it's a three-two. Uh, and then <laughs> we got loves the inspection, and she, like you that. know, and she's getting the inspection. And she said, "Yeah, we have this weird stuccoed in two by four on the bottom, and then like supposedly I have two roofs." And so she said, "Yeah, it's very convenient. When the hurricane comes, just pulls off one roof, and I have another roof." <laughs> I was like, <laughs> uh, "I don't think that's how it works." I don't yeah, think that's pulls, good. Pulls both them. Yeah, it's very common. I mean, like in my house, which is over a hundred years old, when they did the addition in the back, they just kind of built a roof over the roof. Because it's, it's easier and cheaper than trying to remove the roof, which you need to do that. You're supposed to remove the second roof so you can properly insulate. Yeah, it sounds a little dangerous. I would love to be a fly on the wall in Leo's house on the weekend. Because I can hear this whole thing about how his wife loves the 100-year-old home and he doesn't like it. And any new little tiny defect, he's going to see it and stare at it and try to find time to fix it. Maybe. Uh, yeah, it, it, that, it does get to me. But I mean, I've like isolated myself to a room with a PlayStation and a TV. Oh. A and couch. you fix that room all up. There's no defects in that room. No defects in that room. <laughs> that, that room is like pristine. <laughs> and last night, uh, yeah, like with sidebar, Division 2, a video game, dropped the raid, which was the first big mega content. So there were eight of us for six hours playing this one level. That's why you're so tired and like, Bleh. you did that last night? Oh, that was last night, yeah. That's why because you're it, so It came blase. out yesterday, and if you don't play it the day it comes out, all these guides come out and everyone thinks they know what they're doing, but it's the, the mystery of trying to figure it out together. So if you play it first, then you send out the guide. Pretty much. Okay. That's yeah, cool. we, just, we were using checking. something called Twitch, which is a streaming video game network to actually broadcast what we were doing. And we actually cycled through three or four different groups over the course of the six hours. So the person listening might laugh at me, but I think these video games are fascinating. I watch my son play them, and I could just watch it like TV, like <laughs> just watching him play because the graphics are so amazing. That, that would explain it because like in our Twitch channel, we had like three or four of our players, their moms were watching us play <laughs> yeah. and commenting. And I'm like, I'm, I'm shooting this guy in the head for you, mom, from oh across the distance. Oh my video God. game reference. No. From across. <laughs> Here, mom, here's a headshot. She, she, was, she was cheering us. It was just great. Uh, so I, I, love, I yeah. love supportive parents. Yeah, so right. Troy's, Troy's, Troy's mom, it, Troy's mom if you're listening, 
this 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 thirty second uh, sidebar into Division Two is for you. As long as you know that's a video game, and it's like just stay in there. You know, yeah, don't be one of those crazy game. people. Yeah. Speaking yeah. of mom, I did bring you guys a gift. Uh-oh. So Aww. I so this is Ken again. So I come from a farm in Orlando. That's where I'm, I was born. And I they still you have guys, those there. Yeah, and we have real chickens. And so I brought you guys twelve chicken eggs from our farm. Uh, that's so Leo's. Oh my next, gosh. I, I was wondering what those were. Yeah, out those there. are those are a gift from my mom. So uh, thank you. <laughs> so we'll tell your that mom, is so sweet. Awesome. My we, wife's going to really uh, enjoy that. She likes the fresh, the oh, fresh me eggs. Me too. Me too. Who doesn't, right? I know. know. There's such a difference. And the, the yolks are so much more yellow. Just so different. Anyway. Just better. Mm-hmm. That would be a great little, like, do you have any Airbnbs, like, near where you live? Because mm-hmm. you could leave them a little six eggs. That would be so cool. So actually, One my Airbnb touches. story starts with my mother. She went and bought a couple different properties. And she had the comparison for herself of whether or not she wanted to traditionally rent it or vacation rent it. And we actually had some family coming in in a few months, and she wanted to make sure she had the property open for them. And so it was kind of a forcible habit. She didn't have a choice. Uh, So she had to get it furnished and whatnot. Uh, But one of the things that she does, her calling card is always leaving six pack of fresh eggs How from our farm cute. in That's the awesome. home like what an, what an awesome like treat right it really yes. is something that a hotel could never emulate yeah. you know it's and it's that's the difference that's yeah. the Turn difference and we're going to basically talk about some of those differences right um as we get into the other thing i'm going to run through the rest of some of the tips Absolutely. and then that is on our list of like you know some of the things to how you can make your place better. And I just stayed at one that pretty much checked off every box that you had awesome. so it's going to be awesome so what do you mean what else well, uh, not for this hour after Where the you... after the tips here. Okay, okay, okay. So uh, calculate costs. That's number five on our list. So mm. one of the things that you need to look at is the total amount, especially if you're actually going to be financing it, right? So you need to put all these things in. One of the big rules of thumbs um, from Florida Realtors is they budget 1.5% of the home's value on repairs annually. Not a bad rule of thumb because you may have some repairs, especially if you're looking at short-term rental, mm-hmm. right? If you have tenants coming in and out, they're going to probably put a little bit more excessive wear, perhaps than someone that maybe lives there for a year. I have a question about calculating the cost. So what's going to be the difference between property management of a normal unit, which is like 8 to 12%, versus a vacation rental? Oh, I'm so how, glad you asked that. And it's is... not time to answer it yet. So you have to wait <laughs> to get that answer. I have to wait till Jeremy shows up at 9 o'clock to you, get an answer for I that? I think Jeremy's coming early. So not just that, but um, yeah, I think we need both of them here before we answer that. So just table your question. Don't forget it. If you need to write it down, we're going to talk about it yeah, again. Give me the pen we won't tell you exactly down, when, but it's going to be somewhere towards that. the end of this hour and the beginning of next hour. Um, but calculate all those costs. You know, especially here in Florida, one of the things you want to make sure you don't forget about is flood. Right, mm-hmm. Adam? Mm-hmm. That's one of those things. There's kind of a little bit of a Band-Aid on, the, on that right now. Um, we've talked about it in the, t- in the past. It's probably about time to you know, bring one of those expert guests back on the show to chat about flood insurance again because it's one of those things that could change pretty, pretty drastically. You probably, you're way more political than I am. Do you keep up with that flood arena much? Do you have any idea what I'm talking about? <laughs> She just said she's. I'm more way. Anyone that knows me knows I know absolutely nothing about politics. You are okay. Well, <laughs> I'm more, if, if I'm more political than than you are, that means that your your level of politics is that of a like a a, a ball. Oh no, let's in, not like, go there. Wrapped in like <laughs> aluminum foil, so nothing can get inside, and that ball is in a box, and that box is at the bottom of the ocean. Well, I, let's not be extreme. The, the, mo- the most important thing about flood insurance is there's more and more private market options coming available. Mm. Like we wrote one yesterday for a, a mutual client, and uh, we would have had to wait for an elevation certificate if we wanted to get a quote through the NFIP, and we were able to add flood as an endorsement for a hundred extra dollars. That's mm-hmm. great. That's, wow. So, you know, was the, it in a flood zone or now? Yes, it was in an AE zone. Wow, that's like the, the that's incredible. Yeah, that's the so creme de the, la creme of flood zones. Yeah, so the the homeowner side of it was probably, you know, it was 1400 versus the best standalone that I had was 800, <laughs> but you're probably not finding a flood policy for $700. So that's where it, you know, well, honestly, I mean, if you at. want my take on it, some of the these flood premiums are crazy, Adam. And so part of the reason why I haven't pulled the trigger on something that's in a va- like uh, you know in a flood zone mm-hmm. on the water is because I would prefer to kind of self insure through that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, not homeowners, but flood yeah. for sure. Well, and the best the best part about these private market options is 
One, you can get more coverage than the $250,000 cap on the dwelling that the NFIP has. Mm. And also, you can get replacement cost on your contents, which is not an option whatsoever with the National Flood Insurance wow. Program. And the other thing, too, is like once it's been hit twice, right? It's had two mm-hmm. things. FEMA won't even insure it anymore. That's true. Now, if you do get in that situation, none of the private markets are going to do it either. Well, really? it'd still be a private market, but you're not going to like that price. So how <laughs> ba- pricing? give me an idea how bad that would be. Um, well, for example, we had a home that we insured that was up um, up in Cape Sandblast, kind of where the hurricane just came through. I thought that was and, Mexico Beach, wasn't well, it? It's very close. They're, you know, that's, okay. they're all the same. Um, and he was in what's called a Cobra Zone. So that's a coastal barrier resource area. And that's where the government has come in. They don't really want you building over there, so they don't provide anything wow. whatsoever. So his flood insurance premium every year was is somewhere around nine thousand wow. dollars. Yeah, that's on I mean, three hundred and fifty thousand dollars worth of coverage. Whew. When that when that whole flood thing got crazy, like we we had a contract um, on something in Hernando Beach, and it was probably I don't know around three hundred thousand. It wasn't anything crazy. The flood insurance came back thirty five thousand dollars a year. One of those oh premiums goodness. were. They ended up picking it up for about fifteen, and then later found some better flood coverage. But mm-hmm. like. If you were in a flood zone, not much was closing yeah. <laughs> at that time. So it's kind of like back in 08 on the regular housing market. It was pretty limited limited choices there. All right, our off-air number, in case you want to carry this conversation with us offline, you can call or text, like Leo said, VK at 813-377-2775. Again, call or text us to get information on anything we talk about or to connect with any of our guests. 813-377-2775. Again, call or text 813 813- 377-2775. When we come back right after this break, we're going to continue our conversation on nine tips for buying a vacation home. Back in a minute. And welcome back to Tampa Home Talk. This is Adam Talley with Talley Insurance, joined by Leo Kane of Barrel Project Engineering and Inspections and Katrina Madewell with Keller Williams. And we're joined today by Ken Barton, CEO of Hostie. Yeah. And that talking, brought us some amazing eggs on the break. Yes, and we're <laughs> awesome. talking all about short-term vacation rentals today. Yeah, buying a vacation home, and uh, Jeremy's going to be joining us for the next hour, and we're going to chat about the difference between some of those longer-term rentals and the short-term rentals. And some of the things you need to do when you have that, because it's uh, I, li- I liked all the tips that are coming up next. So so uh, another thing, too, is talk to an accountant. This oh, one's definitely. really big. That's like mm-hmm. the important one. That probably should be number one on the list, if you ask me, because everyone's tax built is going to be different, right? So depending on how your taxes roll, uh, will determine if that could help you, hurt you, what that would look like. But and Katrina, nonetheless. I'll weigh in there. We do suggest to every one of our clients, they look at a company, they're a company called My Lodge. They're recently purchased by another company called Ad Valera. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. whenever looking at a vacation rental property, you could just pop in an address to their website um, and they didn't pay us for this. So we just use them because they're the best. Mm-hmm. Um, but most of our clients have anywhere from five to 10 properties. Um, they're investment properties. So you should really consider looking at that. They're not only going to help you with your licensure. So vacation rentals, the thing is you're in a regulated market. Yes. So much different than many other businesses. This is regulations. This is housing. You have fair housing. You have city, county, state. You have so many layers to it. And uh, our home office is actually in Chicago, Illinois. So imagine even more layers. You know, yes. blue state, like way more Union. unions. Yeah. Oh, I oh. wish Mike was Mike was supposed <laughs> to join us. And he knows so much about what you're talking about right there. And because here, I know, and like you said, in Chicago, it's probably different. But here... Here, depending on where you are, some of them actually hold it. You pay it to the state, you pay it local. So there's a lot of different nuances. You probably know a little bit about that. The most dangerous part is it's usually monthly. And so we find that like 90% of most vacation renters are, or vacation rental owners are not in compliance. And so they can get themselves in trouble and the city can pull the plug. And here's the issue, you know, you bought a house on the premise of vacation renting it for the next, you know, years, and you already have $20,000 of booked revenue coming in. And the city says, hey, you don't have your license. So you need to rectify that immediately. Otherwise, they're going to shut you down. And then Airbnb has to comply. Is the licensure pretty much the same throughout the states or is it all different? Every single, every single state is different. 
Uh, and but it's not just the state that's a problem. It's really your city and then your local, county. Local, yeah, oh, municipality. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Local permits too. My my mother. So in Orlando, we've we've just opened up our, our second office in Orlando this past week. You have to so, tell me what you learned with your mom the hard way too, right? Because <laughs> I'm sure you guys learned some stuff. Oh my gosh, so many things. Uh, she's she's one of those people. Uh, her whole house is very kitschy. Uh, farmhouse chic is what she calls it. So that means like you know when you go to a garage sale. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know you go to a garage sale. You go to like. I uh, remember. I, I'm I'm picturing a porcelain rooster with yes. a cookie jar. <laughs> Yes. Worse, worse. Every rooster thing you've ever seen is inside that house. Everything oh is gosh. one big. But you know what? It's kind of genius. You know, if you make it a vacation rental, you're looking for an experience. And someone who selects that, they're going for that experience and that, that massage. Get to stay a Cracker Barrel, basically. Hey, that's essentially what it is. <laughs> Not what I suggest to our clients. We say like <laughs> modern, minimalistic makes it easy, higher rentability. But my, my, hey, you know, my mom, she does what she does. <laughs> what, did, what did you guys learn through that experience? Because you said kind of like by default, she ended up owning some of these mm-hmm. vacation rentals and yeah, that's yeah. kind of the way it went. Mm-hmm. But what was what was a couple of things that she learned that you're like, man, I wish somebody had told me that before sure. we started doing it. Mm-hmm. A big part is the taxation. So she works with a company called Evolve, um, or she did work with them. That's a vacation rental management company. Uh, had some really big challenges with reporting of revenues. So, you know, you have three layers in this process. You have the uh, the Airbnb, VRBO, the home away. Those are the people usually getting the direct bookings. Many, many owners have an intermediary, um, someone like Hosty, a management company, to make sure it's seamless, you know. There's a lot of details of, in that. <laughs> turnovers, professional cleaning, you know. I have a lot of opinions about people who clean their own properties. Like, there's a lot of, there's a lot of difficulty there. Um, there's just so many things to do, from not forgetting the toilet paper to making sure there's enough soap in the house. You know, just little tiny things, but details that need to be considered. And then there's the owner who actually receives the capital at the end. They receive the money. And so when the money flows through there, I think one of the biggest, there's two big lessons. Number one was understand the reporting and the taxation. That's really important. You can't Hence, talk to your accountant that they'll be going to be a big part of this. Absolutely. You should make sure you're doing this in compliance. This is a business transaction. If you want to, you know, you can't actually go to a lender in the future after you have 24 months of proven rent. Um, and more importantly, yeah. Katrina, whenever your clients are going out and selling their home, they can prove this is a yes. functioning investment yes. property. So you want to talk about increasing the value of your home. What You take a $200,000 house that has $30,000 of pre-booked revenue. Nice. What is that house worth? $300,000? Yeah. I mean, there, it's going to be more than the market value of just the home. Well, because they already have guaranteed money coming it's an in. asset, yeah. You're, you're just buying up that asset. You're buying future potential. Um, so that's lesson number one. Lesson number two was my mom, and I see a lot of owners get into this when they want to invest into vacation real estate. They have two options. One, they buy the home outright. Either they leverage it or they just you know buy it in cash. Or they'll try to do the rent arbitrage game. So arbitrage, if your listeners aren't aware, it's kind of like you buy an apple on First Street and you go to Fifth Street. You buy an apple for a dollar on First Street. And you go to Fifth Street and you sell it for $2. Same product, same exact thing, but the dollar in the middle is the difference, right? So they're trying to flip it, like find A to B, B to C buyers, is that what you're talking about? Rent. So you rent a property for $1,000 and you vacation rent it out for $2,000. Mm-hmm. Oh, you see what it. I'm saying? Yes. And they make all that cash in the middle. Here's the problem. That can get dicey on an insurance level, huh, Adam? <laughs> the owner Ooh. holds all the risk. Yes. So the owner is getting a fixed rate of like $1,000 and then the owner is actually holding all the risk and the arbitrager is kind of genius. All they have is cream. Straight revenue. Yeah. And if there's any damage to the property, meh, also not the owner, not the. That's definitely A to B, B to C on a rental level. Wow. So I'm really against this. There's a lot of companies out there doing the arbitrage game. You have wow. a lot of Silicon Valley money who come in and say, hey, we'll come rent your property. We'll happily do this. So I tell your owners who are doing traditional rentals, look out for this. Large companies, Sonder, Stay Alfred, be very conscious of what they're offering and also understand the risk that you're getting yourself into, especially for insurance. Now we have, like, we don't do any property management. Jeremy's going to chime in on that when he comes in. But when we do offer tenant location, means the owner is going to man- manage it themselves. But basically, we're going to find them a ready-to-go, qualified, pre-screened tenant. Yeah. And those leases are bulletproof because they're written by attorneys. It's very specific on who's going to be in the property. And that's grounds for eviction on the leases that we would we would put in place. And that's the thing so. with traditional rental. You have those eviction capabilities. With vacation rentals, it's different. You definitely still have those those powers. People can't throw parties at your house. Like That's one of the biggest things. People hear Airbnb horror stories or vacation rental horror stories. Knowing how to properly defend against those is probably one of your first things you should consider if you're going to go down this route. Can you imagine how sticky that would be? I was thinking about the last Airbnb, Airbnb I stayed at, uh-huh. which was in New Orleans. Uh-huh. And it was one of those like attached ones, and the owner lived next door. Granted, we weren't partying or anything. We were just mm-hmm. there for a conference. We weren't even there much. But I can just imagine how uncomfortable that would be for the owner if you were having a party and it <laughs> clearly said in the rules, no parties. 
Well, the good news is the owner has the full right to call the police. So, Hosty, when we manage, if we manage properties in seven states, we do all of our management remotely. That means we leverage software and technology to make sure our properties stay locked down and under control. Um, so the owners trust us to implement all these different technology solutions to make sure those properties aren't being abused, aren't you know things aren't happening, negative you know reviews, all all kinds of things. Um, we've called the police several times and got them out lickety split because the relationship using VRBO, HomeAway, or Airbnb, it's very clear. You don't mm-hmm. have the right to throw a party there. They can't even have one more person. So if they pay to have six people stay there and a seventh shows up, that's grounds for eviction immediately, and wow. you keep all the money. That's important to know, right? You don't want someone just saying, you know, because one of the other things is like there is insurance policies through Airbnb and VRBO. So whenever they book two people, they're basically getting a two-person insurance policy for six days. And so if they bring eight, liability, something happens, someone gets hurt it's or something. one more person. Well, who holds the risk is the owner because that's not what they actually yeah. agreed to. Makes sense. All right. Number seven on our list is test before you buy. Exactly <laughs> what you said, that's what Adam. I said. That's or what you I said, said it. Yeah. yeah. So a little bit of, you she stole the thunder us. a little early. The, I'll the take all the credit. It's the beard. You yeah. guys look so similar. Well, didn't he say he <laughs> air, he did the rental thing last? That's why I was thinking. I, I, yeah. We did a, we had an, we used Airbnb when we went to Panama and oh, it was the fun. nicest it was the nicest place. I would live there. It right. was awesome. Well, the cool thing about that, too, is you can gauge the slow times. You can gauge who the people are going to be around. Just get a feel for the area. Make sure it's something that you want to want to actually yeah. take on. And so number eight on our list is work with an experienced realtor like me. Somebody like me knows the ins and the outs of a lot of these transactions. We're going to be able to answer those million questions that you have that you should be asking. And maybe some that you're not asking. We'll be able to answer those, too. Can we talk all about that on uh, one of the podcasts that you have? Right. Yeah, the Real Estate Empire podcast. So we at Hosty, we work with so many investors who want to buy properties, not just in the local market, but diversify their risk. So we have a lot of property, a lot of property owners in the Midwest who are looking to purchase in Florida, low regulations, low taxation, and you have a lot of multifamily units on the market. Yes. Nice. So we always say go through a realtor because you're a professional investor. The last thing you're trying to do is cut corners here. You're making a half million dollar, seven hundred thousand dollar investment. Why would you want to save, you know, three hundred dollars by trying to do a for sale by owner when you're going to hurt yourself for fifty thousand dollars in the back? Yes, end? exactly. Never worth it. Not and once. last on our list is just take your time. Don't mm-hmm. be in a hurry to jump in and buy this property. Take your time. Look around. Ask. Feel. Even if you miss out on what you feel like is going to be a stellar deal, it's still worth it to, to skip it. Pass it up and make sure you're ready. So take your time. And if you want somebody like me to help you with this process and guide you through it, there are people. We talked about this on another show that we're looking to buy their first investment property. And I said, look, based on your finances, you're about two years away from doing that, mm. right? We'll be totally transparent with you about that. You can count on that. I'm going to tell you everything you need to hear when you don't want to hear it. <laughs> and our off air number is 813-377-2775. 813-377-2775. So Ken, I know you popped in a little bit earlier with us. We're so glad to have you here. Um, but let's tell the person listening a little bit about you. Like, what's your background? You know, what did you do? <laughs> before hosting how did you get here so i am a florida native uh, although i haven't lived in florida for a very long time uh so my story is uh if you can see my little tiny pin i'm openly gay and lgbt um growing up in florida so it's an interesting experience myself i'm not religious so it's another big layer of like how old are you can i ask you that uh, i'm 28 years old okay um and uh, my experience in florida so i went to florida state university uh, and I have a very interesting degree. I have two degrees in Mandarin, uh, which, which I is a know I weird. saw you speak fluent <laughs> Mandarin Chinese. That's incredible. I do, yeah. Nice. And that was through Florida State. And so I spent many years outside the country: five years in China, two years in Berlin, Germany. And I've built, grown, and sold businesses across the world. Um, and so coming back to the United States. Um, I wanted the ability to create a better opportunity for myself in the United States. I think it's actually quite challenging. Outside the U.S., less regulations, much more easy. There's a lot more money flowing, whereas in the U.S., we have many more rules. Right? Wow. Different, different experience. Different yeah. experience. Definitely China is like the wow, wow west of business. And like it's really – just do whatever. <clears throat> well, also being bilingual in English and Chinese makes things very easy. Um, I'm also six foot five, so like it's easy to control power in a room. Um, <laughs> yeah, just just be a, be an honest. Good thing we're all sitting right now. <laughs> He's still tall. I mean, like I said, I do some special with the camera to make us all look like we're the same height. <laughs> Uh, very kind yeah. of you. Thank, but, thank you. But when I came back to the U.S., um, you know, my family was in vacation rentals. I never touched real estate because myself, I was like, I, I've always done technology companies. I always wanted things that could grow rapidly, and I, I didn't want to touch real estate because I'm like, that's an old-fashioned business. You know, it's not yeah. everyone does that. Like, there's if everyone's doing it, how could it possibly have like opportunity in alpha? Yeah. How could that still be there? But my family got into vacation rentals. And By accident, right? Your mom? Absolutely. And when you learned more about the potential, I just, just wrote a blog post about this, but I call vacation rentals stocks and traditional rentals bonds. 
because the growing exponential value of the income you can create from Airbnb and VRBO in the future. So that's how I got started. It's incredible. And that market, like right there on the beach, you know, where our client purchased is just, it's changed so much. Like that's oh, yeah. the first one I've had like that in a while. Cause we represent a lot of different, in a lot of different capacities, right? And just the, when I was looking at the comps on how much those were going up, like on weekly and monthly rentals, it was incredible. Like, and of course it's gonna drive up the monthly sure. long-term rent prices too. Yeah. All right, this is Tampa Home Talk. Our off-air number is 813-377-2775. 813-377-2775. When we come back a little bit more, we're gonna dive in and talk to Ken a little bit more about Hosty, what they do and how it all works. Back in a minute. Hey there, everybody. This is Ken Barton, CEO and founder of Hosty, and I am back on Tampa Home Talk. Uh, phone number 813-377-2775. And um, you can call or text to learn more about vacation rentals. We're going to teach you a little bit of Mandarin this morning. Uh, as we just talked about, that I happen to speak fluent Mandarin. We were practicing. Did we you were, get we it were. right? We're, so we're going to say good morning. Yeah? All yeah, right. let's try okay? So I'm going to lead first so the audience can listen in. So it's zao shang hao. And then we're all going to do it together. Ready? Okay. One, two, three. Zhao shang hao. Good morning. Tampa. Good morning, Tampa. 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 <laughs> Got it. Awesome. <laughs> oh, wow. There's never a boring day on Tampa Home Talk. No, yeah. is there? <laughs> and now our listenership just tripled. <laughs> All right. We've got some Chinese. That'll, I'll be a little bit disappointed because I don't know any more Mandarin outside of what I just learned in the last two minutes. It's okay. I'll translate for you. Don't All worry. Right. That's fine. Sounds great. <laughs> so um, how long did you spend overseas in like China and places like that? <sighs> so probably seven years in total. And you learned um, that in college or there or a little bit of both? Yeah. So there's a, a partnership university program with UCF and um, Tianjin Foreign Studies University. Um, but it's interesting. Uh, Mandarin is different than a lot of other languages. So um, verbally, I was fluent in one year. You know, when you're doing it every day, uh, I actually have a really funny story. Uh, so I'm a big guy. I'm six feet, five inches tall. I'm 265 pounds. Now I'm a big, big guy. Uh, when I was there, I lost, um, 20 pounds in two weeks, um, which is almost dangerous. The food right? difference? Uh, no, it was my pride. So I was there trying to learn Mandarin and I didn't know how to say many basic things. And my reading was awful. I'm a big talker, but my reading was not good. Because uh, it's symbols and characters. Yes. You can't, you can't read a character. You either know it or you don't. That's it. Yeah, it's, it's really, really different. Wow. And so um, I was starving myself unintentionally because so I, you learned how to speak. Well, I couldn't read the restaurants. I was so wow. embarrassed. I'd walk in and there's so much shame. You've been studying it for a year in the U.S. You'd think you could say like fish or pork or mm. – but they, You, you can't know, you even figure out how to order chicken. <laughs> right. You don't know how to say like the dish, right? Like country fried steak is not the same thing as beef. That's a very different sentence. You could just go in and say, help. Uh, yeah, I did. A How lot. you say help? And, and eventually you, you lose just go your to the market. You just go to the market. It's yeah. just points. Street food. Yeah. And street, food and street food and points. Well, I actually think it's kind of similar to real estate, right? Because I think a lot of us are expected to know how to like go buy real estate because everyone does it. Or at least a lot of intelligent investors do it. And then you don't realize the intricacies of real estate. So it's kind mm -hmm. of similar in that uh, when I was in China, I thought I, I should have known all these things. Um, and I got real, I didn't. It was really bad for me. But it... You know, you lose the pride, you lose the hubris, and then you can learn something, and that's what I did. So quick question, a little bit off topic, but uh -huh. not so much. If you, like, you know how if you live in Florida and then you go to college in another state, it's like, could be triple the price. How was it when you when you studied abroad? Was the price, like, more, or was it lower? So, so you're talking about, like, 2011, 2012, right? So mm -hmm. it's a unique situation. Um, I am an American citizen. China desperately wants to entice American citizens to come study Mandarin. Desperately. Um, it's kind of the What's genius. the push behind that? Do you know? Absolutely. It's international politics. Okay. Um, it's so much harder. Like, see what we're doing right now? This this would have never happened. A, a radio, you know, I'm talking about this forever because the Chinese government gave me a full ride scholarship. Wow. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's kind of the same kind of geopolitics as if you know anything about um, birthright in Israel. How, like, they'll send you on a free trip when you're in your youth if you have um, Jewish heritage. Same situation, right? Wow. Lots of countries will do full ride scholarships. I had no idea, and I do have Jewish heritage. Right. Right. This, so this goes back to my statement earlier about how we're in that bottom of the sea and that ball all wrapped in. Okay, like, fine. You, Fair politics enough. Politics is invisible. <laughs> yes. But if you think about it, like say you're the government of China, you know, you can you can donate money, you can build roads, you can do those things. Or what if you have personal people like me who've had a physical impact of their, their my whole lineage has changed, my whole family's future has changed, my partner, my children, they will all speak Mandarin, and I've changed that world for myself and so and you look at him he's like as white as me you would never <laughs> think he speaks mandarin so i'm a good secret agent <laughs> i just say that because you know you like 
you know, people like me wouldn't think you speak anything other than English. But you know. so have you leveraged that with uh, Hosty to get uh, Chinese people to rent the properties? So we, so Hosty's focus is much more on the owners themselves. Um, Airbnb, VRBO, they do the heavy lifting for you. Um, you definitely need to do your own vetting, but many of these, there's so many platforms out there. Booking.com has just gotten to this. If you didn't know, Google um, two months ago launched a uh, vacation rental booking platform. Mm-hmm. If you didn't know, Marriott just got into the market as well. So obviously it's lucrative or they would not be entering that game. Yeah. What I, what I like to say is Marriott's as been long there as for you a while. have the property, they just launched it publicly though with their okay. luxury side. So what I'll say is um, it's, your challenge is not really renting it out. If you're at a reasonable price, it will get rented and in the range of 90% occupancy. So that's not the challenge. The challenge is the keeping it going, keeping it up because it's yeah. easy to rent it once, but you need to do four turnovers in a week and you got four hours to turn it over each time. So let's talk about that. I'm going to jump into sure, some yeah. stuff I had planned later because we I pulled um, a bunch of information from people that run out their property short term uh-huh. and it's all about things you should know before you ever rent it. Mm-hmm. One of the things they were saying is the income mac could actually help more than you think, right? Back to this whole lucrative thing. <gasps> we're um, on our next list. There was a guy named, well, we're going to flip back and forth, but list. there was a guy <laughs> named uh, Ben Smith in Montana. He rented out his four bedroom home and he was traveling so much. He was hardly ever home. That's kind of what prompted the whole thing. And so essentially, uh, what happened was it it way more than paid yep. what he was expecting for it to pay, and um, he actually has it booked up for like three months out of the year. And he he said, you know, Montana happens to be a great place for people that like to travel in the summer. So it totally totally took care of you know a lot of expenses. And sure. You, even here in the beach, right? If you were to rent it out for this short term snowbird type thing, if you're able to, that could probably cover your tax bill or then some for the entire year. Yeah, we so. see a lot of our owners. And that's one thing I want to talk about because you guys keep mentioning the beach. But I'll say, think of the entire Bay Area. Yes. You have a very unique situation with vacation rentals because there's no limit of travel. Travel is one of the largest businesses in the world. It actually compares mm-hmm. with oil. And more um, and more people are doing it. It's a lot different than it was when I grew up. Think about whatever you talk to someone, like what, when they tell you their interests, usually top five interests, travel. Yeah. Every single human you ever talk to. Therefore, the amount of money they're willing to spend on travel is really hard to say. It's like not a fixed price. You'll say it's kind of limitless, you know, because it's the thing you want to spend your money on. So you're willing to spend more. But what I like to say is you're in a supply and demand game. This is back to basic economics. If you have a low number of hotels in an area, but you want to stay in that area, the demand is going to be higher. Yes. Therefore, it doesn't matter if you're on the beach or you're far out. If you're actually more in the boonies or you're in the farm country, that's some of our most profitable properties because the buy is so much lower. You mm-hmm. buy a property, yeah. a four bedroom, two bath. It's really far away from the town. It's one hundred and thirty, one hundred and forty thousand dollars. But but they're different too. Like uh-huh. the experience. I mean, Pat, you remember when I did that? Uh, I did the show from River Ranch. Remember, I didn't have the broadcast equipment. I did on the phone. Do you remember that? Is he in the station or is he like we can't see him? I can't see. He's probably doing. <laughs> He's getting coffee. He's probably doing. See, so if you were at the uh, Beasley traffic. Studio with us, Ken, uh-huh. there's a bunch of stations like all right there. So sure. sometimes when we're talking to Pat, he's like in another room in another station doing traffic. <laughs> So yeah, it could happen. <laughs> anyway, so people, th- one of the things that I thought was really interesting, and you can chime in on this as well, people are typically going to be very respectful of your place. Yeah. Um, and you still want to, of course, take those precautions because, you know, when people stay in the private home, they're just, they tend to be more respectful. Um, but they, you know, there's a lot of personal touches, right? Sure. And that's the difference between staying there and maybe like a hotel. So on the rare occasion, something could get broken, but you always want to take that damage deposit. Every single time, no exceptions. Ooh, I would argue with that. Okay, oh, so contentious good here. for we you. Back. We <laughs> have an entire hour. We're in good. our final minute. We can continue to talk. We are in our final minute. It's interesting how these two-hour programs just kind of roll together. Yeah, this is fast. We knew it would happen, didn't we? When we added mm. that. All right, it's Tampa Home Talk. We'll be back for our second hour in just a few minutes. 813-377-2775. We'll be back right after this break. Stick around. A lot more fun to come.